Official data from China's Ministry of Health shows that while there are currently over 3,500 types of medicine in China, the country has only about 60 varieties of medicinal drugs for children. Due to this lack of availability, this means that children have to take adult medicine. According to the Hubei Daily, the country's pharmaceutical companies get around this by simply prescribing adult drugs in dosages half, a quarter or one-eighth of the recommended adult dosage. As such, the question of how to administer the proper dosage to a child has become a headache for many parents, with accurately dividing the drugs being both tricky and risky. This is especially true of medicines that treat heart disease, where the risk of overdose is even more acute. And in China's clinical drug studies, medical specifications and related materials don't tend to provide information on the effects and safety of drugs being administered to children. China currently has 260 million children aged between 0 and 14, meaning there are potentially over a quarter of a billion young people affected by the lack of appropriate drug dosage information. So how do net users view this phenomenon, and what do they think has given rise to the lack of available medicines for children? To find out more, let's now join our researcher Esther Deng in the newsroom. Hi Esther. Uh, well, to start with, what do net users have to say about this apparent lack of children's medicine in China? Um, is this a problem that many people are affected by on a day-to-day -day basis? Hi, Michael. Well, I've seen plenty of users complaining about this situation, and many posters have some depressing statistics to share, uh, like this user who writes on Weibo.com. We have over 6,000 pharmaceutical factories, but only around 10 of them are making medicine specially designed for children. For me, the development of children's medicine is a barometer for measuring how civilized a society is. And this poster says on zx.gl.com. I read recently that China currently has 300 million children, but we are in bad need of medicines for them. 90% of the medicines on sale in this country have no version for children. Our pediatricians merely give prescriptions based on their own personal knowledge and experience. That's quite risky. And this poster named Ku Shu has this experience to share. And my colleague's six-year-old son suffered from diarrhea, but after taking some anti-diarrhea medicine, he started shaking from head to foot. When he was sent to hospital, the doctor said that he had taken too much of the medicine, which had poisoned him. But the point is that there is no clear instruction on what the recommended dosage for children ought to be. And uh, the economic information newspaper quotes a medical expert saying that uh, currently lots of medicines in China have no specific illustration of the appropriate dosage for children. And even there is, the only recommendation is for children over two years old. But uh, what if you have children under two years old? OK. Uh, well, with over a quarter of a billion children under the age of 14 in China, you might think that children's medicine would be a, a booming and lucrative sector for pharmaceutical companies. So why do net users think that the industry appears to have been so marginalized? Well, on this question, it seems that the main reason that uh, pharmaceutical companies are reluctant to produce drugs made especially for children is because it is hard to make a profit from. Uh, the Changjiang Business Daily interviewed a pharmaceutical employee from uh, Hubei province who said that uh, sales of children's medicines represent less than 30% of the total sales volume in their factory, so the amount of children's medicines they produce every year is fairly low. And he also said that uh, although children's medicines cost, uh, cost an average of 10% more to produce than their uh, adult equivalents, the profits are much lower. And uh, this poster reads on seeds.net. Uh, our regulations are such that the retail price of children's medicines is substantially lower than the medicine for adults, and is sometimes as low as one-tenth of the equivalent uh, adult medicine. So when the possibility of turning a profit is so low, it's only natural that the pharmaceutical companies aren't willing to produce children's medicines. And it's also worth noting that uh, the process of developing medicine for children is very different from producing medicine for adults. And there are several ethical issues involved that can further complicate things. OK. Um, and finally, Esther, do net users have any suggestions as to how the situation could be improved? Uh, yes, many people have offered suggestions, uh, like uh, 我是一只十一鸟, who writes on Weibo.com. 
I think universities should undertake more research into the physiology of Chinese children so that they can provide valuable information for the drug producing pharmaceutical companies. In this way, they can produce medicine according to more accurate scientific information. And many posters feel that China should learn from more developed countries, which have done a much better job in terms of both promoting the development of medicines for children and then regulating the industry. Uh, for example, Tang Ji Wei De writes on LZCVnews.com. Uh, uh, in developed countries, governments give plenty of support for the research and the production of children's medicine. And they also give market exclusivity to companies who develop new types of medicines. I think China should also implement incentives and policies like this. And uh, finally, I'd like to wrap up with this take posted on 163.com, which reads, in 2006, the EU implemented its pediatric regulation in order to regulate the research and the production of children's medicines. They also set up a pediatric committee to supervise and regulate the industry. And the U.S. also has different laws and specific organizations in this field. By contrast, in China, we only have two laws in terms of medical management, and neither of them makes specific reference to the regulation of children's medicine. Professional supervisory bodies such as there are in the EU and the US need to be set up in order to supervise and regulate this sector effectively. Okay, thanks Esther. And that was China Tech researcher Esther Deng with some views on the dearth of children's medicine in China. Next up on China Tech, some of the top trending phrases on China's most popular search engines.